you've suffered fairly significant head trauma. Are you experiencing any issues with memory loss? Do you remember anything? Do you know who you are? I'm an alien. I'm here to kill everyone. Surprise! <laughs> Dr. Vander Spiegel, glad to have you back in patience. Speech! Get out of my house. I'm afraid I'm becoming too human. You saved my life, like you're my dad. I need family to remind me who I am. Your people will be here soon. What are you talking about? Don't just send someone else to kill everyone for you, including Asta. Yes, she's human, idiot. That octopus just call me an idiot? <laughs> You're the only one keeping that alien from taking us out. I think you should spend more time with some other people in town. I'm like your only friend. What is that perfume? It's Jergens. I did a BM earlier, so I had to wash him. Something going on around here. I just don't like secrets. What are you keeping from me? I think an alien erased our memory. You think police work is a joke, huh? You think this is a game? What you think, I got Willy Wonka tattooed on my ass like it's a chocolate factory? My people are coming to kill everyone. You have to do something about this. You're an alien. Phone home. I love New York. People just run around like chickens with their heads cut off. You have no idea who you are dealing with. I think we might have gotten off on the wrong foot. Ah! <laughs> now this shit's getting weird. I have a strong feeling in my gut here. I think I know where you're going with this, and I am not liking it. Maybe it was a you. No. F. Please, don't, please. Oh. Damn it, you're supposed to be an officer of the law. What's going on, Harry? I'm building a bunker to save Asta from a total extinction event, and I'm going to lock you out and then sweep up your ashes with a dustpan. Nothing. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to NRW. I am your host here today, uh, Rob Medina, and I also got today with me Heather Hurdle. Heather, how are you here today? Good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. And I know we kind of had our bit of troubles uh, getting things started here, but now we're here. We're getting the ball rolling because we are excited to get into Resident Alien Season 2, and we got an opportunity to watch the first three episodes. So I'm sure well, you guys seen the trailer and the intro for this uh, review here. Uh, there's a lot that we want to get into here. So just for... for uh, for anyone who hasn't seen, not seen the show, we won't get into in too many spoilers here. So if you guys are concerned about that, fear now we won't be getting too much into that. But there are going to be some things that we might be a little bit close to that uh, to that spoiler territory just for the sake of the conversation that we're going to be getting into here. But I want to first uh, just uh, start off here with in the fact that this is actually based on a uh, comic property that I was not familiar with at all. I've actually heard about the show last year and it, it piqued my interest, but I just never got around to checking it up until around the time that we started getting to this uh, review here, which I checked out season one. I know you had to check that as well too. And we got the ch chance to check out the first three episodes of season two. Um, so my question first to you is that, uh, were you familiar with the property before the airing of the first season um, prior to it be releasing or, or is this the first time you had come across it when it, once it was released on TV? So I knew about the series. Um, it's from Dark Horse Comics. And of course, you know, when, when the series was originally announced, I think it was originally announced like 2016, 2017, um, during the original property release. Right. We, you know, comic book companies, what they do, they do all the time. They just restocked us. They finally reprinted a book that might not have been reprinted. Um, and it, it, would, it just made it very easy um, for us to get new books. Uh, we had, of course, the last series was in 2018. Um, and I apologize for my camera guys. It is kind of a mess. Um, but with that, it's, I was not, I will say this. I knew of the series. I had not read it. Um, and it really took a, a TV show being announced for me to start reading it. Mm -hmm. I have only read the first two of all four miniseries. It is a ongoing mini series set. It's not an ongoing series, um, but it's from uh, Peter Hogan and Steve, uh, Steve Parkhouse. Parkhouse was a little bit busy. He, he can't keep up with the monthly. So we got four minis and they're really fun. A little bit more um, true crime than what we see in the show, but fun. Really? So, so, it, so I know we're going to get into the first season real quickly, but do you, so far from what you've seen with the, what you've read in the comic books at that, at this, up to this point and seeing what you've seen in season one, is it pretty close to the source material or is there a lot of major changes that had been made for the show? 
there are a lot of a lot of changes. Yeah, um, once again, the big one being that the 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 primary basis of the of the original of the comic series is that it's true crime. It's not necessarily there's the show is very apocalyptic, right? Uh, but there and there's almost none of that. Um, basically, hmm. uh, an alien is dropped on Earth. He's been living here for two years, like that. In, in the show, it's nothing like that. No. Um, he's been living here for two years. He's very used to human dynamics. He just wants to stay away from them. Um, so it's it's almost nothing like it at all. It's it's got the same characters, but or most of the same characters, um, but not the premise is completely different. Interesting. You think it's for the better for the worse from yeah. what you've seen so far? Um, I think it's kind of a little bit of 50 50. Um, okay. I was actually, t- I was actually talking to Chris Sheridan. Uh, I had my interview with him, my first interview guys. I was so I was so excited. Um, Chris <laughs> Sheridan, who's the director and writer. Um, I asked him that question. I was just like, why, why did you go a different way? And he was just like, we have enough of, you know, we have enough true crime. We also didn't want mm. this little itty bitty town to become true c- crimey. Like, cause we're already seeing that a little bit. Yeah. We don't want that. We don't want a cute, beautiful, pretty town to be the place where everyone dies. So I think that for, I think for the context of the show, I think it's a good idea. Um, I, I, and honestly, I don't think it's neither here nor there if they, if yeah. they follow the comic in that way. You know, it's funny because uh, so we're, since we'll, we'll get it right to season one right now, because we both had the opportunity to check it out uh, in preparation for season two. Mm-hmm. So there definitely are elements of that true crime, well, you know, kind of that true crime feel to it uh, in the beginning. And then it kind of just sprinkled in every once in a while throughout the season. And of course, you mentioned before that it has more of a apocalyptic uh, theme to it, which is very uh, heavy into this sh- uh, in the first season. So uh, my first impressions of the show when I first saw it, I'll be completely honest. I I'm a fan of of Alan Tudyk, who is, in my opinion, is like a, a national treasure because and just about every performance he's done on film and in television as well, too. He is by far some of the best things about that production uh, when it comes to you know either sides of the television side or the film. But with his performance in this movie, he actually was the reason that won, won me over so far because I thought he was so good in, in portraying, you know, the human character that we see in the beginning of the show and we kind of see him flashbacks and then we get to see the adjustments of him being an alien trying to act more human, which he does very, very well. But then everything else along the way, as far as the other characters are concerned and the overall story in itself, um, I've, I've personally believed that it's one of the most surprising shows that I've come across and the fact that the show was successful enough to warrant a season two and in turn, I'm hoping it would warrant a season three after what we've seen so far with the second season. Um, I was very surprised. I never caught on to it early on, having heard a lot of great things about it, because that was one of the first things about the show that I've heard last year, how good the show really is. And for some reason, I just never caught on to it. But when you first heard about that, um, what, did that at any point ever intrigue you to want to check it out? Or if it wasn't until recently, was as as getting access to the show to check it out, where you started to become more interested in actually checking it out? No, I actually, I mean, I, I think I'm like, I, I'm just like you, like most Alan Tudyk fans, you, you see something with a minute and you're just like, I'm going to watch that. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to watch it. Um, and I, I was really excited. I, I won't, I don't deny when, um, back when we first saw the original trailer, uh, not under once again, the comic, I wasn't entirely aware of at that time, mm-hmm. um, from a, from an educational perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, when, when you looked at it, it kind of seemed a little bit more CSI with an alien. Like that's how I kind of came yeah. to me. Yeah. Um, and so I was really excited. I want to see a true crime show with an alien in it. Um, and <laughs> then it just kind of fell off my radar. And I, and I'm yeah. really excited that we got this opportunity because yeah. I, everyone said great things and it just wasn't there, unfortunately, especially for, for, and you, and you just said this right before we started recording, especially for us who don't have live cable anymore. Yeah. Like it's, it was a great, it was a great opportunity. Very excited to have been able to watch it. You know, and I also want to give a shout out to Sci-Fi too, because um, you know there was a period of time where Sci-Fi, you know, wasn't really known for making you know high. I, would, I hate to say it like this, but I, I don't know either way to get a, to go by it. But just you know, high caliber television um, shows, and, and in some cases, movies as well too. Um, but in the last couple of years, I think that the production, when it comes to the the, the writing, the uh, the production itself. Uh, when it comes to the shows have gotten better and better and better. And this is like one of the a testament for me that, you know, with uh, resident ailing being a, a great example of how much they've improved throughout the years where they've gotten a really high caliber actor uh, with r- very great writing, great acting, great production and so on and so forth. A little bit more. No, but it, I, it sounds like I might've had a slightly different upbringing than you when it comes to this channel. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, I was brought up on sci-fi. Like I, I went through the roller coaster when they were bought from when they were bought by an international company. Yeah. I watched Babylon Five. I watched all the Star Treks when they moved over from UPN. Like this has been this was my channel when I was a kid. So I can definitely understand from a perspective how it there was there was definitely a year where it just dropped and then it, yeah. it has slowly progressed into a better position. Yeah. But no, honestly, I had I I was kind of hoping for the camp. Um, and it came off at the right amount of camp. So I think so too. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I was not the, the sci-fi angle of it did not dissuade me from wanting to watch this. I love sci-fi and I love the camp and I love their horror sci-fi is some of the best horror series that, you know, on live TV. So, <laughs> yeah, they actually have some really good stuff. that have been coming out in the last couple of years. Well, so, okay, let's get into season one here then, because, uh, like I said before, season one for me was actually a genuine surprise for me. And I know you have had some, have a lot of great things to say about it as well, but, um, for you though, when you, uh, as, as a series, as a, as a season had progressed, man, um, uh, was there, uh, one particular aspect of the show that really caught you by surprise with how they were taking the story here, uh, having read a little bit from the comic books that, you know, we mentioned before had, they made a lot of different, they made a lot of changes for the show, which in a lot of ways, considering with what you just said and how Chris Sheridan had shared his insight about how he felt like he didn't want to do another standard uh, crime show just featured with an alien, which I thought was actually the smart way to go about it since you brought that up. Um, was there anything, anything about the first season that caught you by surprise that, had helped, helped you appreciate with what they were trying to do with the show so far? Um, one thing that really caught my, really caught me was um, how much they brought in. And I, and I'm, and I apologize for the slight politicalness of this, um, mm. how they, how they really brought in uh, the indigenous voice. Um, yes. they're, they're in an area that is very specific. It has uh, many indigenous peoples and it was so important. And you read all the interviews and that's something that was so important to the cast, yeah. to the crew, um, to the show. And you could really feel that they listened in the show. And that that's what I, I really love that you could hear the, the different voices come in through all the different characters. I agree with you too. And you know, that's something about the show that I actually did appreciate that, uh, that they had taken that, um, their, their stance on that and representing these, uh, you know, the indigenous culture, but not represent them in a way, in a, in a, I hate to say it like this, but I didn't want to, I'm just glad they didn't do it in a way that was, um, I'm trying to see what's the best way to go about it, forceful, Stereotype. where, Stereotype. right, they're doing it in a way that's very organic, where mm -hmm. they're just people like us, and what I loved about this show too, which was a surprise for me, is that there's a one particular character, a young girl, uh, whose name escapes me right now, and who, uh, who's actually, um, who's Muslim, but that was never like the identity of the character. It was more just about her. that was part of her background. But her as a person was a more important thing. But we get to learn about her journey along the way, uh, which I'm sure we'll get into a little bit here. But um, that's one thing about the show that I, I think that really kind of took me by surprise is that there is a an eclectic cast with different people with all walks of uh, from different walks of life, and they're all living together. And you know, there's really never a, an issue about the race or the backgrounds being a problem. It was just about the personalities that was always the issue. So that part I appreciated the most about the show. Well, so let's talk about here about the actual story of it's in, in the sort of the first season where we have the alien uh, played by Alan Tudyk, who ha who turns into a human by the name of Harry Venz. I can't pronounce the little guy's last name, but he um, his his whole intention is to arrive on Earth and pretty much wipe up all humanity off the face of the planet because apparently we there's a bit of a backstory which we learned later on in the first season that uh his race have come over to earth on more than one occasions for thousands upon thousands of years helping out humanity but then along the way humanity i guess thought they were better in knowing how to handle the situations moving forward and then uh he they were like well screw the human race let's uh, wipe them out because they're not grateful beings so therefore um fuck them that's pretty much the bottom line so I like that aspect of the story once we get to learn more about it. So it's not a very generic form of like just having to wipe us out because they're evil beings. So there's actually a little bit more texture to the character, a little bit more backstory that we had to get to learn more about. So there's a humanity side of the character that we get to see that he starts to develop along the way, which was very helpful to that story. So for you, uh, learning about that character, learning about the, the alien himself, uh, with the story and having him interact with the other people. Um, I'm sure there's something about that relationship that you see him develop along the way that you have come to, uh, I would imagine, appreciate. But also, uh, was there anything about the character itself that you had come to uh, either, were you surprised about or were you or just, uh, uh, what's the word I want to use? Uh, were you concerned about how they're going to go about in 
taking this character with a story that may be uh, retread on very familiar characters, if you will? Um, I, I think so. So one of the big things that always concerns me um, when it comes to shows just in general is when they try to, when they infantilize a character, um, you, there, has, there has a tendency to be some really sharp, not funny moments, or it gets to be a little bit too repetitive. Um, but I think that they did a really good job with his character. He's, he's both incredibly intelligent, but he's a child. Like, you know, it's, he, he literally, he literally fights, um, he literally fights with Max at, at, yeah. at, you know, at a playground level. It's the fight that you definitely had with your best friend at six years old. You know, you're a butthole kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I think they really handled um, his, his growth um, almost, almost at a child level um, very well. They kind of, he's, he's learning like a human would naturally and i think that was a really great way to put it what do you think about uh all the other ca the, the, the cast of uh, uh, characters we get in the story with um we have um i'm forgetting the character's name off the, the uh not his love interest but his, his friend um the nurse asta. asta thank you very much uh she was actually one of the best things about the show too because we get a little bit more about her background as well where there's a bit, a bit of a backstory where she was uh, married to a, a a really bad person a guy who was really abusive to her and then had to give up her child considering that she was not prepared among other things as well too. And there's a whole little story about her trying to reconnect with her daughter who she finds out who her daughter finds later on that she'd been working with her mother at the same office that they've been working for however, however long, however long they were working at. But um, you know, the, I'm not sure how you felt about, you know, with, uh, with learning about the backstories of each, each of these characters uh, because what was interesting for me is that the, as far as the emotional stakes are current concerned, they were actually very high. And you actually, uh, for me, I actually felt the impact with what they were going through. So uh, from your perspective, um, how did you feel about the, uh, the journey of the, each of these characters that they were going through, especially with Asta here, who was actually one, uh, one of the main focuses of the storylines that we follow in the first season. So I mean, wonder if you have any opinions about that as well. Um, one, ac actually, I'm going to kind of trail off Asta because I think she gets a lot of, of attention. Yeah. Um, one character that I really want to talk about is Darcy. You just see her, like Asta, you get a lot of growth. She, you learn a lot about her. You actually, I, the reason why I kind of wanted, I want to detract from her though, is because Asta's story really just kind of blows up in season two. And I, I know we'll get there. So that's kind yeah, of why yeah. I'm like, I want to detract for a second. And Darcy though, she just is like this, this character that just blows the entire story out of proportion, but in a very strong, independent way. Yeah. And she's she's basically the glue that's leading everything in these weird directions. She's a and secret ingredient of the show, in my opinion. I, I love I love Darcy, and I cannot yeah. wait to get more of her. Yeah. Well, so let's talk about uh, with you know with how the the the, the crew the, the people that we get introduced in the first season because you have the sheriff in there as well. You have you also have his deputy. Uh, and you also get more of um, Darcy's background, too, where we come to find out at one point she had a relationship with the town's mayor, who his story, uh, it turns out, has a very uh, different turn of events in, later in, in the first season. So, you know, the, the, the thing is, is that once we start to learn more about these characters along the way, uh, it was for me, what I appreciate about the show is that they actually kept the stories interesting enough to keep uh, when you start to see the trajectory of the characters, um, a momentum change a little bit. It actually fits along with what they were trying to go for, but it never felt out of place for me personally. Like when we have uh, a change of uh, a personality change, if you will, with the mayor who starts off as a very timid guy, no one takes him very seriously. And then one major event that involves a group of uh, government officials who are trying to hold his family hostage. And then it was able to, uh, uh, to, to take them out along with his wife. And all of a sudden his relationship with his wife turns into a whole different type of a uh, um, has a whole different uh, uh, tone that that just changes along the way when it comes to how they feel about each other. Before they were kind of more or less very um, at odds with that, one another. That, very... that change, even though it seems drastic, at no point does any of it feel unnatural. Um, it feels like it's it's they they really played up. They really wanted the characters to grow emotion. <laughs> excuse me, emotionally, <laughs> um, emotionally, and and it it really shows. Um, it, I I love I love you know Max's relationship with Harry. I think that that even though it kind of switched gears, it switched gears in a very like platonic normal way. Yeah. Um, you know you have uh, you the one thing that's really funny is of course at the end of the season the the new doctor 
yeah. all none, none of that feels strange. It feels like this is all like it's all playing into very traditional sci-fi motifs, yeah, but yeah. In, a, in, a, in a very new or very um, organic kind of way. Yeah. And, and I, I love that. So. You know what I actually liked about the first season? Well, actually, the show in general is that um, the, for example, like uh, I'm, I'm going to use um, I forgot the young girl's name who uh, who's uh, who's Max's friend, but you know we 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 learned that she's a Muslim, and then there is a part where because we we didn't get into the fact that Max can actually see Harry, who is played by Alan Tudyk, as an alien, and his actual physical alien form. He's one of the very rare people who can actually see uh, in his true form. And there's a story that progresses along the way that where he reveals that his friend can knows that he's an alien what i actually liked with how they handle some of the, the with respect to her uh religious background is that when max had told um harry that she swore to allah that he's you know that she's not going to tell and harry's like oh now all i know i know all i know right so like little little beats like that i thought was hilarious because it was like, right but, but again like it's one of those things where it wasn't used in a way in a in a derogatory manner it was actually done very very respectfully but it still had the impact as far as what the joke was meant to be so there's a lot of those beats in the in the show as well to which i really did appreciate as well so there so you know when i was watching the show i was thinking like uh, you know I, i'm i'm really glad that we're seeing the, the landscape change when it comes to you know having to see a group of a group of characters who are coming together for this uh you know for what we what's going on in, this, in these events of the show here but I, I I love I love the fact that the comedy was never wasted. It was it never was pushing and making it offensive. But it was actually very well done and very tasteful, in my opinion. That was never felt out of, um, like it was uh, being too watered down just for the sake of just not wanting to offend anybody, but actually done in a respectful manner that actually could appeal to everyone. At least I would think so. So I'm not sure if you had the same uh, uh, reaction to that as well, too. Oh no, it's I, I find that the wit was very well done. Um, one one of the things that you just see it's and, and and all of them get their own time to be funny. Yeah. It's not it's not like kept to. It's just Harry, you know. Liv, the deputy, she gets her funny moments. Mike, the sheriff, gets his funny moments. Um, and Asta just gets to be a smart mouth the entire time. So it's it's one of those where you you got you. It was very well rounded and it, it felt it felt really good. It felt you, you wanted to keep watching because the characters are just so great and they're done so yeah. well. Yeah, so my overall thoughts on the first season, though, because I know we didn't get too much into all the storage beats here, but you know, I think that the first season really left a really good impression for me. Uh, so my, the only concern that I was gonna that I had was that with season two, can they still carry that same momentum, considering the the way that the first season ended, um, considering that he uh, that Harry was on the verge of uh, 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 wiping out all humanity, but then there's a there's a change along the way where he starts to develop feelings for his friends and doesn't want to hurt them along the way too. And then with some convincing, of course, that he ended up not doing it. But then as he's making his way uh, back to his respective home, uh, he comes to realize that uh, Max is in the ship. And now he has to go back into Earth and drop him back off. And now he can't leave now. So that's pretty much where the first season had ended. And uh, and although I thought it ended in a really good cliffhanger and a really funny one, too, which is what I really appreciate about that for that last episode. Um, I was just concerned, can they still carry that same momentum uh, with the direction that they're going to be taking with season two? So. Did you have any little concerns about that after having a really wonderful first season where did that ever cross your mind at all going into season two? Um, no, just because I feel like they also have, they have a lot to go. They have, they, they can have, they can, they can move really well forward. I also thought, and this is going to sound really weird. If the first season ended with that note where they, he just had to turn around and drop Max back off. Mm -hmm. I thought it would have been a really cute way to end an entire series. So I think that True. it was just a really strong ending that could yeah, go point. in in either direction and so i i get i guess my opinion is I, I i i like that they have stakes in which they have to keep up the momentum i like that interesting i i think i like the way how you just uh, um brought that to uh brought that up where it, it, the way that it ends could have been a, a really good closer for that if it were just the end of that season there yeah it's actually a really good point well so now, let, so we're ready to get into season two here. So you're, you're good with that? Yep, absolutely. So season two, um, so we had the opportunity to watch the first three episodes. And um, as I mentioned before, one of my biggest concerns was that if it's going to carry that same momentum. And like season one, I was genuinely surprised at how well the show was still very well written, still very well acted, how the, the comedy piece still worked effectively in the story. And you also get to see um, more of each of these characters' background where they are 
opening up a little more backstory about, you know, who they are and some little things along the way that you've never learned about them in the first season, you learn more about in the second season. Uh, so it creates more of a, more stories to keep uh, following with them and understanding where, where they're going to be possibly heading um, uh, by the end of the second season. So uh, first impressions of season two that you, uh, with the first three episodes you've come so far. Well, my first impression, and, and unfortunately it's just, this just, just could be kept to you and me and for we didn't get the VFX in the version we saw. Yeah. <laughs> so um, <laughs> we, we need to rewatch it apparently. Uh, yeah. So my it's first opinion- though. I thought no, I it was very- still great. It's just my yeah. first impression is, is I, there were a lot of strings. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a little jarring for you at first when you saw it? Jarring. Um, okay. But it's, it's a good way to create the same narrative, but adjust it just slightly to give us a new plot. Like yeah. we have, we have, we're still in this just, it could end at any moment point, but we, it's changed just enough that we are in, we are reinvested in the same story. Yes. Yes, I agree. So, so for me, my first impressions of the first uh, three episodes that we came across here. Um, yeah, I agree with the stakes are getting a little higher here. And I, I think one of the best things about what with the, the first three episodes we've come across here so far is that all the characters are still very, very interesting. There's a lot that I'm still connected with that carried on from the first season, moving into the, the second season here with the first three episodes we've seen so far. And not, not once, at least for me, I never felt like it slowed down. I never felt like it was, a, it was there were some dull moments here. Um, yeah, I was a little, I, I'm not, it's not uncommon uh, for me to, ch- uh, to watch clips that have unfinished VFX because I've watched a lot of behind the scenes stuff. So that was not new to me. But I was a little surprised that we got that uh, as opposed to a final uh, finished episode. But, <laughs> but regardless of that, though, even despite the fact that a lot of the things that were un, that were still unfinished, I still was very much invested with the story. So that's a testament to everyone who had worked on the project, writing it, directing it, acting and so on and so forth, have done a really good job that still kept me uh, invested with what we were getting here. So um, I, here's one thing I want to ask you about with the, uh, the, with the first three episodes we came across here. Um, so we're not going to get into any spoilers here, but I was curious to see on how you felt about what how, the way that the first season had ended and how the stakes were being raised a little bit higher, uh, allowing more time for Harry, the, the alien, to have him to be on Earth and the reasons why they, you know, for how the story was written and why they kept him on Earth. Um, th- did you have any sort of reservations about how they were going to go about that to keep the character uh, still on Earth and having a reason for him to be uh, staying there to allow the story to continue with him along with all the other characters. Did you have any sort of reservations about that with how they were going about it? No, I don't think so. I guess it's such a, the one reservation I have had is that they aren't giving Harry back his original role within this within the town. So he seems mm. kind of like in this limbo state, this very strange limbo yeah. state. Um, I don't know if I'd call that a reservation. It's more like a waiting point where you're like, well, when is this just going to happen? I'd rather just get, I'd rather just happen so that we can go along with the other parts of the story. I'll give an example. Um, one, one thing that I'm really excited about, and once again, I'm so sorry about my camera guys. Um, Corey, uh, Corey Reynolds, who plays, uh, who, who plays Sheriff Mike, yeah. Big Mike, um, you can really tell that well, his no, Big Black is what he likes to be called. Big, sorry, Big Black. I'm sorry, Big Black. <laughs> That's not appropriate for me as a white person to say, so I apologize. <laughs> Um, but, uh, it's, uh, uh, it, you can really tell, and I don't, I'm not gonna give any spoilers, of course, but you can really tell that something that we're going to learn something exciting about him. We're going to learn something about his past and we're yeah. really excited, but we need Harry to get somewhere for us to learn about the other characters. And we, so I, we just need that to happen. And it's like, at this point, it's a waiting game. And that was the only thing that kind of detracted for me. Really? Okay. That's interesting. I should never felt that way all about it. now that you pointed it out here. I'm, I can see your, 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 your perspective on that. Um, yeah. I'm, I have to go back and watch it again to, to really, uh, you know, to really get a better understanding of it here, but I, I, I can see where you're going with this here. You know, my only reservation about the, the second season that I've had so far was that um, uh, I'm trying to see how I can say this without getting to spoilers here, but um, you know, we had a, a bit of a, an issue. Well, we had a bit of a, a, a secondary story with the government, more or less, who are tracking down Harry in the first season. Uh, if there's anything that I actually had a bit of problem with is how they were actually used uh, in the first season. It was, it was almost as if, though, uh, I felt like they were just more like 
peripherals or they were just there, but they, I mean, they had an impact, but I didn't, I didn't feel like, I felt like the other areas of the stories were much more impactful than actually having them in the story, uh, if that makes any sense. So, you know, with the way the first, uh, sorry, the second season has started, you don't really feel their presence. Uh, so at least yet uh, with the first three episodes, but I'm wondering, uh, considering how it ended within the first season with them kind of just being, I don't know, kind of pushed out, if you will, uh, of the story, and then how they're going to be brought back into this story in the second season. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not really too confident about how that the way that they were handled in the first season, that they're going to be handled any, any better in the second season. I think that's going to be my only consistent uh, issues that I have with the show so far. And I'm actually, um, if there's a way to, to work around that to without having them to be, uh, you know, if they're going to be used, let's make it effective. If they're not going to be, used, if, they're, if there's no way to work around that, I prefer them to focus on other parts of the story that uh, would allow us to um, find other way to uh, raise the stakes without having the government be involved there. Because th for some reason, it just never really did much for me. And the thing is, that the first season, we had Linda Hamilton, who I think is great, who was fantastic. I felt like he was, she was a wasted character, in my honest opinion. I'm not sure if you felt the same way, too. I, I was so excited. I actually, when we were watching it, uh, I looked at my husband and I was just like, why is Sarah Connor here? <laughs> But it's but that's that's the truth. It's you have you do have some of these names, and I'm sorry, <laughs> um, but you do have these names, and which you get at the end. You we do we are kind of getting a little bit of the government, like the government, the the government, the government, Co the government uh, cover up. The government that's a good. That's an appropriate name. <laughs> the government. The government. Yeah. Government. Hashtag government. There you go. The the, uh, the it's, it's a new brand of bubble gum. Um. <laughs> <laughs> hire me sci-fi i'm I hilarious <laughs> government but it's what you would we do it does seem like we are three we are three episodes into which what is realistically a 10 episode show because that's how long the, the first season was yeah. and we only have like this mild like touch of government and it's like where you literally brought in one of the most famous sci-fi heroines in history yeah, yeah. and you're just you gave her six lines in season one and we haven't seen her since yeah well you know what's interesting too is that her backstory we we get a little bit uh, we get a little bit of that in the first season where there is a direct connection that she has with you know i guess alien encounter which is why she's very adamant about looking for you know with, with the department she's running to find this alien here and you know going at whatever doing whatever it, is, it needs to be taken to get the job done and that for me, I said, okay, so she's someone that you don't want to mess with. So I thought as the season would progress, it would see more of that threat of her. So basically, if if Sarah Connor was was a villain, this would be this character, right? Yeah. So I thought, like, I thought they were. It was brilliant they brought her in, and you know, kind of teasing her here and there, and then seeing it progress from there. But it never led anywhere to that. So I'm hoping. But again, I'm not too confident, though, that in season two, if they were to bring her back, which I hope they do, mm -hmm. and actually put her to good use, mm -hmm. that you really get to see the 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 the, the consequences of, of her actions uh, looking for Harry and everyone else who is also associated with him and, and having to, I would imagine, raise the stakes a little higher here. But I also want to know more about her backstory, too, because obviously, you know, when, when she, in the first season when she mentioned that she knew that they were real, I wonder what else had happened that we got introduced from that backstory we see from the, one of the earlier episodes that was never really dealt back into once we got that introduction that I'm hoping we'll get more, we expand on a little bit further uh, with the second season because um, it sounds like to me there's a little bit more uh, to our story than we were led to believe or that, that we are led to believe here that, that I think would actually be more impactful as the story progresses with this character. So if they're going to be doing something with that and there's a payoff, I hope it works out. But if it's one of the situations where they're going to use her the same way that they did in season one, I probably have no interest to kind of see this character progress at that point, because it seemed like a wasted opportunity with such a great uh, high caliber actor and Sarah, enough Sarah Connor, I was to say, uh, Linda <laughs> Hamilton. Uh, that, yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. And she works for the government. So, yeah. So I, uh, I think that she's going to be a very integral character, but I hope they put her into good use. So I know I kind of rambled on about that, but you know, for you, um, I, I, with, with what we've seen so far in the second season, um, there's, do you feel like w in whatever areas that they, that they have had have, were very successful in season one, maybe not so, so much in season two, I'm sorry, in season one, that they probably, you know, was a little behind on. Do you feel like that, um, that season, the first three episodes we've, we've gotten so far 
in some of the areas that you thought that season one maybe have been lacking in, you may have noticed on season two where it had been improved upon for yourself? Um, yes. I do think that one thing that uh, we will get to see more of, and, I, and I'm really excited for, and you already saw it within, uh, I think it was, it was, it was basically just episode three so far. I'm not going to give any spoilers, of course, yeah. but it's, you got to see more technology just in general yes. than Harry has. And I, I'm excited to see what else they can bring in because we got to see very little of his, of his own, per- now that he has devices, um, now that he has things that he can use, not only him, but Max, Max yeah. is also playing around with stuff. Um, we can, I'm really excited to see all the fun, uh, fun gimmicks and games that they can play with his tech. Um, yeah. And it's really, really great fun fight scene that comes up. Not going to say anything else, just fun fight scene that happens with it. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I think uh, what, the, the, what, what they've improved more on this, this season that they were probably lacking in the first season is that, uh, you know, why well, I, I wouldn't say lagging because you know in the first season, at least in the first couple of episodes, you, it's all about in the introduction of the characters, and you have the time to to spend with them to see more of their story. Season two, you know, just kind of hits the ground running because we already know the characters, we're invested with them, so we we know where they're going to be kind of heading to, unless there's some major events that will ch- ch- change all that for them. So I, I think for me, what I'm more uh, interested in seeing is um, if more than anything, I really would love to see the relationship between. Um, Asta and her daughter, Jay, who, you know, I think we kind of touched upon it earlier where she gave her daughter up uh, in the first, uh, in earlier, at one point of her life because of what she had gone through in her life at that point, and then having to reconnect with her daughter again, uh, kind of forceful in, in a lot of ways, but I actually want to see that story uh, progress along the way. I think that's actually one of the, the better part of the, of the series where we get to see a, a much more, um, you know, it's it's a subject matter that I think it doesn't really get delved into too much mm-hmm. to that in that perspective, yeah. and to see it in the show and it's handled with the comedy to kind of balance out the uh, the emotional beats, I think works very well. So I will actually like to see more of that. So, um, is there anything else for you that you had loved from what you saw in the first season that you would like to see continue on and maybe expand a little bit further in the second season? That's actually um, a, r- a really good point, just to go back for a second. Uh, Sarah Tomko, uh, I actually asked that specific question about, um, I was just, because once again, we talked about how indige- the indigenous people, she, she, is, she does have a heritage of indigenous in her background, but I was just like, how important was it to, to talk about being a, being a single mother, being, being a mother who gave up their child, because that's a very important thing that we don't get to see much in television at all. No. And it's, it's often vilified. Um, yeah. And it's, it was, it's been really nice to see that growth and it'll be exciting to see that growth. Once again, going back to Darcy, I'm really excited to see how at the end of the, se- at the, end of the first season, her and Jay started, making, started becoming friends. I'm really yeah. excited to see how the three of them together are going to build this relationship or if something is going to kind of interfere with that. Because, you know, jealousy is big, especially amongst, um, you know, Asta, who hasn't had a relationship with her daughter at all. Yeah. Um, I, I'm curious to see how that 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 kind of triangle is going to if, impact them. That's actually a really good point. Yeah, I forgot about that, actually, that uh, Darcy it was forming a relationship with Jay here. And it's funny because uh, for, for, for anyone who's not seen the first season, we, we learned that both uh, Jay, I'm sorry, I meant to say uh, Darcy and Asta had a, have been friends for years, for a number of number for a number of years. And the fact that she's going to have, at least from what we got to see in the first season, she's having more or less the same type of relationship that she had with her mother when she was younger, where they were developing a friendship and a very strong bond from the very beginning. So you kind of get the idea that that's how that's how the relationship was between herself and Asta when they were young. They, they pretty much hit it off right off, the, right off the bat and maintained that consistent friendship throughout the years, even though they have major differences in certain in certain respects about their private lives and whatnot. Um, but. Yeah, I'm curious to see how that's going to be uh, going to be handled moving forward. Um, all right, well, you know, since we didn't really get much into spoilers here because uh, for obvious reasons, but um, is there anything that you uh, would like to um, point out here in, in in our closing about what it is about the, the second season that you're really most anticipating and 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 and, th- and some areas that we may have not covered here uh, in this mm-hmm. review so far? The the one thing that I'm really excited about uh, just just to just to double back, I am really excited to learn more about. Uh, Mike, I really want to know what his background, what his backstory is with his dad, yeah, yeah. Um, that and and how Liv impacts that because Liv has a great relationship with the sheriff's father, and something happened, something big happened. It wasn't just 
Harry is not the only person who migrated to this town and we get to learn about other characters you know we get to learn about the mayor's wife she's not from here she's I, getting to learn where those other characters who are not from for, not from the town what their background is i think that's gonna yeah. be the most exciting thing about season two interesting i want to see you know i, I always forget that sci-fi um it's gonna sound, sound kind of silly when i say this here but when i was watching the the the, the first season I didn't realize how many times they 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 dropped uh, the word fuck throughout the season, and I I'm, for some reason that kind of caught me off guard. And it, it sounds really silly, it's true because I because it's sci-fi, and I thought it's going to be cable network, is they're not going to be dropping mm-hmm. the f bomb. And then when they did, I was like, holy shit, this is actually they really you know not that it matters though, but it, it, it seemed like it never was out of place. Like that's one thing about the show that I really did love is that the most you know so i guess some people get the perception that you know adding cuss words will make certain things better and that's not always the case here but what i love about the show so far is that all the things that we have seen before are being done here but they're doing it in a way that's slightly different and providing a, a different set of characters that we don't normally get to see on screen often if, if we do see them not in this light so mm-hmm. the fact that we are building on their back their story and continuing moving forward and actually uh, getting more uh, story uh, uh, for these characters and having learned more uh, information about their background, I think for me is one of the best. This is one, what I'm looking forward to the most, where um, we have the time to spend with them, we have the time to learn more about them, and I think that that's a really wonderful thing to have because you know how many times we've seen that we have we've seen characters of this sort, but never who are Muslim or who are indigenous or or African American for that matter. And giving them just an identity as a person, and then the, the 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 culture and their actual race is secondary because we're focusing on their story rather than the race and the skin color. So I appreciated that. So I'm looking forward to see how that's going to be handled moving forward, and I think it will be handled very very well mm-hmm. uh, as the scenes and progress here. But uh, so your overall thoughts so far with season two? Uh, would do you are you do you would you highly recommend it for anyone who's never seen the show uh, for them to check it out? Absolutely. Um, I think we have a couple more days left. If you have Peacock, yeah. grab through it, just binge through those first 10 episodes. This is, this is a lot of fun. Don't sit on it. It's been a lot of fun. I agree too. So we'll go close it off with that here because so both you and I agree that the resident alien season one is fantastic season two. So far, what we've seen is nothing but a great, great uh, writing, great acting, great directing, all the whole bit. It's all done very uh, phenomenally in this season here so far. Uh, so with that being said though, so you can all follow us here on our social media accounts on Instagram and on Facebook at new release Wednesdays and on Twitter at the NRW. And for you, Heather, where can they follow you? You can follow me on Twitter at Heather is a nerd, which is the opposite of my TikTok and Instagram handles. So Heather at Heather is a nerd. Nerd is a Heather. Heather is a nerd. Go backwards. It's okay. Whichever one you'll find me, I promise. <laughs> uh, you can follow you guys. You can guys follow me on my social media accounts on Instagram, Rob underscore Medina 585 on Twitter, Rob Medina 585 and on Facebook, somebody just Rob Medina and my show shows me to count too. on Instagram. You're so cool with Rob Medina and on Twitter. You're so cool with WRM. Now until the next everybody, you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there. Cheers. <laughs>